About 13% of man-made global greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture, mostly from the use of chemicals. Agrochemicals such as pesticides and fertilizers are also one of the major causes of biodiversity loss. I'm at Schaefer Vineyards in California's Napa Valley, where sustainable farming practices have been integrated into the cultivation of their wine. Practices which boost biodiversity by making chemicals a thing of the past. We're pretty fortunate. We're up here in one of our hillside Cabernet vineyards. These grapes go into our uh, Hillside Select, which is our top Cabernet. Can I have one? You can have as many as you like. All right. Well, just one cluster. I got to save some for the wine. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with growing award-winning grapes is that bugs appreciate them too. Every year, we spend about 40 billion U.S. dollars globally on pesticide use in agriculture. Here, though, with a jungle of crops planted between the vines. Doug and his team encourage greater biodiversity where predatory bugs like spiders dominate pest insects. We'll plant cover crop right when we harvest the grapes, which is September, October. And the winter rains come, the cover crop grows up, and you'll have a stand next spring, April and May, of about this high, and we'll mow it down once, twice. We might disc it in, depending on the age of the vines, depending on how much rain we've had that year. But basically, you know, use that cover crop as it dies off to help build up the organic components. Let's go see the rest of the vineyard. All right. Well, we've got our 55 acres, mostly hillside Cabernet, irrigation ponds, which are filled by rainwater in the winter. This one is also where we recycle the water from the wine cellar. And then we have our array of solar panels. We're 100% solar powered. And that's just because why not? What do you mean, why not? It's smart. We live in California. Okay. The sun's out. Come on. <laughs> what is the big problem with the way it was being done? It was using chemicals, which just didn't feel right. You know, the money it would cost, you, the guy is applying it, they've got to wear a, 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 an astronaut suit to protect themselves. You know, there's, <laughs> if you take a look at that, there's something wrong with that. It was the change in attitude, change in outlook. That, to me, is more important than the initial decision to plant cover crops. Traditions in farming once they get established, are tough to change. I got a hat. So David, what are we planting here? We're planting a legume cover crop mix. Uh, it grows up over the winter, and then we'll plow it in next spring to incorporate the, the organic matter into the soil. Definitely, we're improving the soil health, but we are also getting erosion control benefits out of it, definitely. Erosion? Yes. Plants cover the soil. They germinate a little bit sooner than the native grasses do. A little broader leaves, and therefore, when the rains come, the early rains, it disperses the energy of the rainwater to, to protect the soil uh, early in the season. There's just one pesky problem that Schaefer found out about the hard way. A crop this fresh and plentiful is just perfect if you're a hungry gopher. No problem for Schaefer, though. They've made a deal with some birds of prey. We have uh, hawk perches for the hawks and the other raptors and whatnot. To, those the big posts? Yeah, those are the posts up in the field. Another thing we have out here is we have owl boxes for barn owls. We're going to have to go up and clean it out. Really? Uh, how bad is it? Oh, wow. This is like a bio suit. So do I just shove this jo shovel in and plow stuff out? Yeah, that's, that's about all there is to it. Tell me when. All right. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Oh. How's it looking there? <laughs> you weren't kidding. There's a lot of crap in here. Oh, look at that. There's actually a little skull of something. Good. Uh, that, that means our owls are doing their job. Yeah, they're working. So the biodiversity that you guys introduced was good for the gophers. <laughs> That's why you guys have this fleet of, of owls and hawks. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, because they're, it's pretty good habitat for gophers. So in, instead of using chemical and bait, uh, different uh, poisonous baits, we, we use barn owls. An adult barn owl will eat one gopher a night. The chicks can eat two or three in a night. One box might do more than a thousand in a year. Wow. <laughs> You've been doing this now for how long here? 27 years. All right. When I first started here in the early 80s, the juices would be deficient in nitrogen and other minerals and so forth. And, and so the fermentations uh, would not be very happy. So as we started this uh, sustainable agriculture, the nitrogen in the juices has actually increased. And so that's a good thing. So basically, you guys have a uh, happy vineyard and a better grape. Yep. 
Yeah, so I'm pouring some uh, 2006 Hillside Select. This is our flagship wine. It's made from our Hillside Vineyards. I was just up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so with all you guys are doing, can you honestly say this is a better glass of wine? Yes, the vines look happier, the grapes are happy, and I'm happy because it makes my life easier. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that.